Good morning, guys. Welcome back to The Breakfast Club. This is episode 20. It's already it's episode 20. I know. It's crazy. It is crazy. It's going to be June 1st here soon. Yeah. <laughs> but no Wolverine days. No cause... Wolverine days. Yeah, it's kind of sad. I'm not going to lie. I'm not, it's a really weird feeling right now because I'm typically like... Full blown stressed out, which well, kind of are still. Yeah, well, yeah, but for totally different reasons. <laughs> yeah. No. So. Well, so wait. Uh, Matt Tobe is in phase two. June first, phase two will begin. Phase two. So we can have fifty people, <laughs> right? So we just have to have like ten different Wolverine days. For like four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. I don't think that's gonna happen. No. Wolverine month. <laughs> summer. Wolverine <laughs> summer. Actually, we're in summer. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's too bad. Uh, yeah. We're sad here that we don't get to put it on and have everyone out, but hopefully next year. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely next year. I'm we'll sure we'll be out of phase two. New ideas for sure. Uh, speaking of getting outside and shooting, you had your first Ipsic shoot on the weekend? Bam, yes, and it was a pretty good match. I'm super thankful for the guys in Selkirk that put that on through Ipsic Manitoba because. They had to go through all the hoops and everything yeah. to get approved to actually, you know, have people outside because mm -hmm. it's dangerous out there. So we went into Selkirk, which is our usual uh, pilgrimage at 4 a.m. To, to leave <laughs> and get out there so we can start shooting. Uh, Crush some McDonald's and be on your way. Oh, yeah. I got a 10-piece chicken nugget meal. <laughs> at 4 in the morning? <laughs> Not at 4 in the morning. I, I mean, that wouldn't have been my choice, but... <laughs> Well, I don't know what it is, uh, either it's COVID slowing it down or what, but we went through the McDonald's and Brandon on our way out to get coffee, and they didn't even have, like, breakfast meals. Oh. You could get, like, a McGriddle, and that was it. Hmm. There was no, like, anything else, or, oh, I guess we're getting McGriddle. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. No, the match itself was really good. It was about a 10-stage match. Um, ended up fourth overall, so I was excited about nice. that. Nice. Way to go. Well. Uh, did you yeah. feel rusty, or did you just oh, pick up right where you left off? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have not practiced or dry fired or anything for like two months, so it was really bad, but still did uh, good enough to get four. So, right on. I'm happy with that. There's definitely a lot more I could have done better because uh, I've been working on my mindset at matches, and I was staring at a stage, and the entire time I walked through it six times and memorized everything. I practiced, like, let's do this. And the buzzer went, and I spun around, and I hit a target, and I stared at it. There's one going over there. Like, oh, crap. <laughs> but probably wasted about a second and a half staring at it. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I would do with that because I'm the same way. Like, just thinking about sporting events, I typically think a lot beforehand. Yes. I have, like, a game plan, an idea. But then whenever, like, the buzzer goes or you start, I think my mind just goes... Pfft. And, like, the, you just your body takes over. So I don't know if that would be good for me or not. Well, ours is always, you know, you, are you ready? Stand by. And it's like, beep. And then they say, I'm low show clear. And, like... 15 seconds disappeared out of your life and don't know what happened. <laughs> Interesting. Well, hopefully we'll get out and do some more yes. of that this summer. I have all my gear with me. Yeah. We can go shooting. We're hoping to. Um, it is a bit of a nasty but typical Manitoba day out there. Winds blowing yeah. like chicken. 70 kilometers an hour. and Gusting to 70. Yeah, gusting. Uh, and it's my also... My barbecue almost blew right off my deck. It's chained to my railing, luckily, so, you know, that it's... stopped it, but... It's like five degrees outside, too. Yeah, it's, it's not windy the and chilly. Not the warmest yet. It's almost June. Well, we had a really nice warm spurt there, so... It's getting a little depressy around here. But anyways, yeah, we don't know for sure if uh, we can get some time in here later this afternoon. When it gets a bit warmer, we might make it out there, yeah. so there may or may not be some footage happening throughout this video. Maybe. <laughs> I also brought the Enfield because I wanted to, and I haven't brought it out in a long time. Okay. So, potentially shoot that too. I don't yeah. know if we're going to run any, you know... Uh, matches or uh, <laughs> any kind of stages with the Enfield, but we'll see. We'll have fun. Let's struggle with that one a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just shoot it and have fun. <laughs> okay. Um, and I apologize. I totally spaced and forgot to uh, throw up on Instagram there yesterday asking if you guys had any questions. So... One job. <laughs> oh, I think, I, yeah, I have one job and I screwed it up. So sorry, we uh, are going to have that component to this episode, <laughs> but next week, there's always next week. We can put it up now, so ask us questions. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to serve us. Okay, so what's been going on here this last week? Uh, well, obviously the, the showroom's open. Yes, That's right. awesome. We are open. We should have led with that. Yeah. No, it's it's great. Uh, showroom's all opened up. We've had tons of people coming in. It's great to see everybody. Yeah. Um, our, we have a 
So if you're not familiar with the Wolverine showroom, we have a little area where you have to get buzzed into the building. And uh, we just set up some of these Lysol canisters. So when you open the door, it's <laughs> and you get disinfected and you come no. in. There's a nice little There's a hand station. sanitizing station. <laughs> um, and we do have some guidelines in place. Like we're yeah. only letting five people in at any given time at once into the store. So yeah. typically that's, I mean, it is all the, the anyways, typical but... things that are put in. Yeah. yeah we got to do it all. So uh, we're doing that. It's going really well. Yeah. Uh, tons of people coming in for getting their bows set up because mm -hmm. the weather's nice other than the wind obviously today. But right. uh, guys coming in, getting their bows set up. A lot of airsofters coming in. Yes. Which... There's a subject real quick we'll jump into because... Yeah. We haven't really talked about airsoft on here yet, I don't think. No, we haven't. And it's such a polarizing <laughs> subject. People have some very strong opinions about airsoft. Very. And <laughs> Every I, post like, that we put on social media just blows up with, like, a lot of people aren't happy about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like, cringe to, to hit posts and it's everyone just, like, jumps on it. Either people are like, oh, cool, you guys yeah. are doing this. It's about awesome. opposite ends of the spectrum. People are really excited or people are not very excited. No. I don't get it because, I mean, like, we're not going anywhere. We're doing everything we've been doing, and we're just reaching more, more people, people in a different market. So I don't see how that can be a bad thing. We're not abandoning things. <laughs> or, like, and, yeah, we're, we're, we're still doing what we do. And so we're also guess, doing Airsoft as well because it's a, it's a market that we saw that could be filled in the yeah, local area. So we wanted sure. to help everyone around here. and We're bringing in lots of products, and yep. we've already had to do a bunch of reorders with it. So it's been going good for Yeah, we're happy with how it's going. There is lots, lots of, like interest in it in this yeah. area which is great and why we pursued it in the first place but it just always catches me off guard a little bit when we make a post on social media and it uh it, it turns negative so and much. pauses very fast yeah it gets so much attention um <laughs> for those of you who may be asking you know what why would i want to get into airsoft yeah well it's it's awesome because it's an inexpensive way to to get out it's outdoor recreation it can also be indoor whatever you want to do really because it is possible to do it indoors just mm -hmm. don't shoot your tv <laughs> uh but no there's a lot of uh different areas where you can do it uh it's a low cost a lot of fun and a good training component it is a good training component so if you're doing uh i'm not going to call them real firearms versus fake firearms because <laughs> that's not the proper terminology but if you're doing any kind of other sporting where, uh, for myself, shooting Ipsic, I really, I've been trying to find an airsoft tax sport so I can ah. get more, but they don't make one. That I found, anyway. Right. But there are, like, Shadow 2s, Glocks, everything like that, and it, all of that stuff fits with your regular equipment, so you can get super inexpensive uh, dry fire muscle memory training mm -hmm. without having to go to the range. You can do it in your basement, yep. living room, whatever, you just have to have an area to capture the beads, obviously, but right. it gets you uh, a lot of training for low cost, and it's really cool. And like I said, it's a lot of fun, and you can get in, um, like, you don't need a, a PAL or any kind of licensing for it, so you can jump into it, see if you want to get into it. Yeah, it's a good intro operate. almost, to, if you're yeah. brand new to shooting sports in general. You want to try it out, and you think, oh, it's, it could be fun, or, yeah. you know, 3-gun or whatever. Um, and there's actually a, a, a little bit more of a, a niche market in it, too, but it's really cool, because they have, like, the old K98s, M14s, yeah. like, all full wood. Yeah. and everything and uh the k98 so we have yeah, actually own whole oh yeah thing. i don't foresee someone going to like uh, uh an official airsoft match with a k98 because all the rounds are actually encapsulated in, oh. a, in one round so you actually have like a five round strip clip <laughs> so do they have like i i honestly don't really know a lot about it is there local airsoft matches that happen yeah. throughout the year throughout so, the summer like uh small plug the coalition airsoft manitoba uh, so they're the, the local group that operates uh, out of Brandon. They have okay. uh, a bunch of local matches here, and there's a couple. They, they try to organize a bunch. Um, there was one in January that I attended. Oh, really? Uh, it was really good. It was at the indoor at the Keystone Center. Oh, okay, um, cool. So, yeah, there's obviously Manitoba. It's eight months out of the year. It's winter, <laughs> so we do a bit of indoor. <laughs> Which is great. But, yeah, there's uh, a bunch of different areas around. There's a big one in Saskatoon this year. There's okay. one outside of Winnipeg that are, like, you know, the 24 hour matches. So it's, yeah. it's a lot of, there's a lot of in, investment from people in it and it's a lot of fun. Right on. So Well, I learned something new today. So yeah. hopefully you guys did too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks like something you might want to try out. Give us a call. Yeah. Yeah. we got um, a couple of the staff here are really knowledgeable in it. Mm -hmm. um, they've been doing it for years and we're super excited to see that we're getting into it. So yeah, um, yeah I will never understand the <laughs> immediate hate for it if you've never <laughs> even touched it before. Well, that could be applied to many, many it's like topics and areas yes. of life. It's like a child saying, I don't want broccoli, and you've never <laughs> tried it. Did you want broccoli as a child? I eat more broccoli now. Now? We're not talking about now. <laughs> I want to smack my youngest self. <laughs> yeah. Broccoli's delicious. All right, moving on. 
<laughs> um, we also uh, got a shipment of Daria MK12, so we're restocked yes. on those. Yeah, all the different all colors. All the different colors, yep. Uh, we've got some Glocks in. Yes. Um, not all the different models, but we did get quite a few in, and there was a couple colors. There was tan and gray okay. uh, in the 17s, and a lot of 9s, but we also have, like... We do have some 357 SIGs. I believe we have a 45 Gap. All those kind of, you know, more oddball ones we do have as well. All right. Try to stock everything. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Check that out. Yep. All right. Now, we kind of have some, well, it's not really our news, but news in general. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Some updates regarding uh, the whole OIC. and. Yep, grab my... <laughs> <laughs> Please Announcement. I'm actually surprised you didn't have that teed up on your phone already. <laughs> Oh, give me a second. <laughs> uh, no, so basically there's been some press releases and some yeah. information that has been released in these last couple days. Uh, we're going to kind of cover off on that. Yeah, so there has been four of the uh, more prominent major, um, a lot of different words you can use, lawsuit, court cases. Yeah. Uh, Official filings yes. against different areas of this OIC. Yeah, so we'll, we'll touch base on all four of them here because there's, there's four separate entities uh, attacking this one. So it's really good because... Yeah, they're kind of coming at it from different approaches, different angles. Um, yeah, so you can you can kind of do it on all fronts. And it, honestly, uh, in not our, I won't speak for the business, but in my opinion, it's, it's a really good way to do it because that way you have um, more opportunities and different angles to, to yep. approach. So uh, firstly, the CCFR yep. has filed and link below. They, had a, they did a really good video and yep. fully explained what they're doing. It went live yesterday or was that two days ago? Two now? days ago. Yes. So definitely check that out. Which would be four days ago. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Four days ago it went live. <laughs> we'll share that here in the video. Yeah. Uh, those guys, like Rod, uh, completely explains everything they're doing in the video. So definitely check that out. You can support them directly on yep. their website. Um, obviously, if you're not a member of the CCFR already, definitely become one. For sure. Uh, they do awesome work for the individuals and the end users. So yep. they're an awesome organization to, you know, to fight for Get your rights. Mind. If you're looking for a way to... <laughs> Fight against this OIC, yep. we're going to give you some options here. Yeah, and 100% uh, transparency. Wolverine Supplies, uh, which would be me and Andrea here, <laughs> are uh, a part of the CCFR's, we'll call it, case? I don't know, like, there's so many different words. Yeah, so there's a lot of terminology, but their Wolverine Supplies is featured in their case against... Multiple different varying we're, bodies of the government. Yeah, so we're kind of a retail component within it. Yes. So the business is uh, working with CCFR, uh, and that'll come in, why I said that will come up in a few seconds, but uh, we're working with them, and... The, Along with some other groups as well. Yeah, they're, oh, honestly, there's... Check Watch out the video. Link. <laughs> yeah, they explain a, it really well. <laughs> we're not doing so good right now. <laughs> no, there's a, they have a 38 page, I, th I think it was 38 pages, might even be more. Um, document that they've presented and filed to the court. So it is a huge one. They're tackling a lot of different subjects yeah. and Rod fully explains it in the video. So check out the video. It's awesome. You Support bet. the CCFR. Get a membership. Donate if you can. Yeah. Or, you know, if you're not able to donate financially, share. Share, share, share. 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 Yeah. yeah. Get the knowledge out there. That's the biggest part. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's one. Okay, second one. Who's the J.R. Cox. J.R. Cox. The Shooting so Edge. Shooting Edge, uh, they have done the same. They're basically filing in their, their own direction. Uh, we're getting a lot more info from them as well. So again, link below. Yep. Uh, check that out. They have a GoFundMe page set up for uh, financial support and donations. So yep. go over there, show him your support because he's doing a lot of work over there in Alberta and it's going really well. So we wish him all the best support possible. Um, you bet. Yeah, I really hope he does well with his. He's getting a lot of support, so it's really awesome, but he could always use some more. So again... For if you sure. can't financially support them, make sure to share it. Okay. <laughs> All right, number three, we have John Hipwell. John Hipwell, okay. So, As you know. So this is where the transparency comes in because Wolverine Supplies is not directly involved in this. This uh, John Hipwell, who is the founder of Wolverine Supplies, has uh, gone out of his own accord here. And an independent has, venture. Yes. He has filed with Ed Berlue, yep. and he is going after the Attorney General of Canada, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and the Register of Firearms. So he has filed his as well. It is a large document. <laughs> I'm not going to read it. I'm getting very dry <laughs> very fast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the reason of transparency here, because Wolverine is already included in a separate uh, case, 
we cannot directly support John because it, there's we can we can support him, but we can't. Um, there's a you have to remain transparent, right? We're involved in the other one, so what uh, John has gone out on his own, he could always yep. use your support. He also has a GoFundMe page set up. Yep. Link below with a full description of what he's doing and everything. So yeah, we're gonna try to give you guys as much information as possible uh, yeah. with where you can find it. Links to all the ways to support these organizations, along with kind of yeah. any information we have on the tactics that they're taking. Yeah. Uh, the biggest thing we just have to make it very clear that John is doing this uh, on entity. his own. Yeah. That is John's case. We're involved in this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we got one more. One more. Uh, KKS Tactical. Yeah. Uh, Cassie and uh, Dave at KKS Tactical are doing awesome work. They have hired Solomon Friedman, and they are doing a... They have filed for a judicial review of the OIC. So, uh, if you want to support them as well, which I strongly recommend, check out their website down below. They have contact information. And so many links. So down many below. Links. <laughs> <laughs> can we just actually... Can we put a link just to all the other links? Just have a static... Yeah, I think what we're going to do... So, we already have a page set up on our website that's titled Order and Council. Yeah, it'll have so all of this information. Put as much information as possible yeah. as it comes to us um, over the next however long. Uh, so Weeks. everything that we've talked about today will be included there, all the ways that you can support these four yeah. different uh, entities that are going after the OIC. Yeah. It's great. Um, they obviously can... Sorry, guys. Um, oh. What? Where did we go? <laughs> Why did we just... <laughs> Uh, apparently I started recording this video and then we get, got distracted or had to do something else before we came back. So I was uh, hungry. <laughs> oh, Tyson had a snack. That's usually me. <laughs> uh, so it stopped because we elapsed our allotted uh, record time that apparently my camera lets me do. So anyways, we're back. Uh, we had like half hour videos. How long was I gone? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Time is... it means nothing to me anymore. <laughs> Um, so anyways, as we were saying, all the information that we can possibly get to you and how you can support um, the fight against this OIC will be on our website, on our Order and Council webpage. Yes. We will share that below. <laughs> yes, because that's going to save us a lot of space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, so check that out. Um, if you guys have any questions, definitely reach out to us. We'll do our best to try to answer them. Um, a lot of this information is publicly available in terms of like the different uh, angles that all these organizations are taking to kind of go after the OIC, yeah. so if you're interested in that, uh, we'll try to give you a way to find that. You can look into it. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of different ways to find out the information. I was doing a lot of discussions about it this morning. Uh, basically, once everything's filed with the courts, unless there's a PR clause on it, it, it is available to the public if you wanted to read the reviews. Um, we'll be publishing a few of the pages of ours here. Shortly? Shortly. Or will it already be published? Two days ago, we <laughs> published it, yeah. So yeah, we, we're going to publish a, a few of, not ours, sorry, John's. Yeah. Uh, we're going to publish some of John's. Uh, the CCFR is doing uh, quite a bit over there, so we're going to be sharing absolutely everything that they, they provide. And uh, we've already reached out to JR and uh, Cassie and Dave, so we'll be talking right. to them and make sure that all this information is put out as much as possible. Yeah. Okay. Boom. Well, I think that that's all we have. The range? 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 Yeah, we're going to the range. Range? Range. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we hope you guys are having a good weekend, and thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Don't forget about it.